<laughs> Ladies and gents, <laughs> we have taken this to the next level, and we have brought four players, or excuse me, eight players from community games <laughs> into a game here, and it's 4v4, all right? It's a 4v4 game. It's not a free-for-all game on Michi, and we allowed these guys to scheme and figure out what civilizations they wanted with their team. And I had said, I'm pretty sure that having Chinese would be awesome because you get so many villagers at the start. So you can see the army count, but then the eco count for the teams. I imagine it's not easy to manage it. Yellow was laughing. But let's introduce the team. So the way this works is it is shared civ bonuses. All the bonuses are going to share to each team, not to the enemy, all right? So we've got Sir Walrus playing as the Chinese in the gray. In the yellow, we've got Deadeye. Uh, playing as the Berbers. In the blue, <laughs> we have uh, Peter playing as the Cumans. I guess the villagers are super fast because of the Berbers. And then uh, in the teal, we've got Franks for High Max. In the um, purple, we have Mistocles playing as the Khmer. You can tell it's a very different world over here because of no additional villagers. Yes. But we have poles for orange, and the farms are finished instantly because... Normally, it's 10% of the farm's food is collected instantly after you build a farm. So it's 100% of the farm's food just gone. And so the food count is going to freaking fly for these guys. Look at the food count. Wait! These guys have negative... Look at the resources! The extra vills for Chinese is awesome! But I'm not so sure the food count is. Oh, crap! I didn't think about that. Okay, anyways, we keep it moving. In the red, we have Azu, who's going to be in Feudal Age in a second. Azu's playing as the Bengalis. He's going to get plus two vills, but it's going to be plus 20. Yo! Yo! Oh, that's how you beat the Chinese people. Dang. Okay. I'm I'm liking their sieves more and more. And then last but not least, we've got uh, Jubber Dunkus playing as the Persians. Which, funnily enough, his TC doesn't have more HP. What? How is he queuing masonry and murder holes in his town center? I'm guessing that's not actually the case. I think it's very possible capture age is bugged. That's gotta be other that's gotta be like some other technology. And capture age doesn't know how to handle this. So Vil count wise, they're even. But the people who chose Chinese, the team who chose Chinese, uh, they didn't account for the fact that yeah, you start with more Vils, but you also start with like negative food. So they're able to catch up. Again, I'm curious to see what Capture Age shows over here. Loom makes sense. And it's, yeah, it says missing string. So, like, Capture Age doesn't have images for this, which is the reason that's happening. So, that could probably happen a lot here. All right. So, I'm honestly, with how this game has gone so far, I'm finding it. I mean, at least it's Michi, but I really feel like the Azu team is going to dominate. Um,. I, I mean, in terms of the unit composition, I'm not sure exactly what direction they'll go. I think we might actually see elephants because you've got, like, tusk swords that could apply to elephants. Bengali elephants, I think, attack faster. Persians then can make elephants. Poles are probably just picked because of the food eco. But I'm obviously hoping that these guys can get themselves out of the negative over here. And then they could do some crazy things as well. So Frank Unique Tech, they've got the ones that are throw, apply to the Axemen. I don't think that's helpful at all because it only applies to your units. You do have Chivalry, which means your stables produce faster. And the stables are cheap with Cumans. In fact, the stables might be like free for this whole team because of the way the Cumin bonus works. Um, Berber Cav is also discounted in Castle Age and Beyond. Which tells me the cav will be free. Aha! So we've got like instantly producing stables. We've got free units. And we've got free stables. That's actually really sick. I, I, they definitely want to commit to cap. And then Chinese farms. I mean, you get more food per farm upgrade. So that's cool. Um, uh, not sure if they have anything that applies to cav necessarily. But you probably, just like you pick poles on the other side or Bengalis. As these guys have so many more fields now. Oh my god, look at the boom. Um, yeah, this is insane. But yeah, um, anywho. I can kind of see the direction these guys are going. 
Yeah, you wouldn't pick Khmer for the farm bonuses, right? You wouldn't pick Khmer for farms, but you would probably pick Khmer for not having to build your buildings go up to the next stage and all the elephant and scorpion bonuses. Now, I should say, Azu, being a Mr. Little Tryhard over here, uh, Azu is 1700. All the other players are around 1k elo, so it's a community game style, and so we balance it the best we could. But Azu's clearly showing that he's got a lot more experience here. And actually, I think we determined with polls, you actually don't want to get your farm upgrades because you want your you don't want your villager to get to a point where he takes 10% or I guess like whatever percentage of the farm. Isn't it 8%? I think I've been saying 10. I think it's 8%. But anyways, um, you want them to just constantly get instant food. So you never want to get your farm upgrades because look, that just happened. And now it's a normal farmer. So we learned that in the other game. So that was a slight mistake from him. Is he deleting those now? Is he... Did he actually delete them? I mean, that's a good strat, too. Okay. That's a lot of work, though. Um, One team's in Castlage. The other team is very much not. But the other team's on the way. And they are very far behind. Man, that's crazy. I, I would have been baited into going Chinese, guys. I was saying having Chinese would be awesome here because of the extra bills. Green is already making war elephants. Oh, God. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> uh, this might be game over. <laughs> I can't wait to see Mahoots. Because Mahoots gives like 10% extra speed to the calf or to the elephants. I wonder if Mahoots applies. There it is. Is that worded as applying to war elephants or all elephants? I think how that works is very important here. I mean, if they Onager cut through and just show up with elephants, it's over, right? And this has just been a failed test. Also, what in the world are you thinking here, man, Red? It's a 200 pop game. <laughs> My man has 11 TCs <laughs> and 145 villagers. <laughs> Your farms bring you so much food already, man. <laughs> well, I respect it. <laughs> I respect it so much. <laughs> I can't wait till he hits him. In 10 seconds, just watch his vill count. He's going to get so many vills. It would be interesting, actually, to go for the revolution. Oh, my God. 390 vills. But now he has to delete, like, uh, three-fourths of his economy to ever make army. <laughs> oh, I'm surprised PCs haven't broken here. All right. <laughs> uh, here's the normal land over on this side. These guys want cheap, stable units. That's all they want. Now, what's the resources collected look like? Can Capture Age even handle this? That's wild, man. I mean, the poll's bonus on the farms is crazy. And we're going to have markets. Oh, you know what else is crazy, guys? You also get 10% of whatever gold you get from trade in food with the Bengalis. So if anything, that's a reason to not have villagers. I guess you could just hold on to them for now. Lots of upgrades flying in. So much to handle there for red. Wait to see what units we have. Oh my god, Frank castles are free! Let's go! Let's go! I really want this team to stay, like, somehow do this. Sadly, they don't have 391 villagers. If you had Bengali 391 villagers with free Frank castles, you could have enough to just castle the entire freaking map. Dang. The Bengali imp tech? What is the Bengali imp tech? So you've got the... Oh, wait, don't they have a tech that makes their villagers cost less population space? Oh, my God. Wait, how much less population space does that tech cost? Red says you guys should have zero pop space now. Whoops. Oh, is it going to be zero pop space on all vills? And he can maintain 391 villagers? Yo, that's nuts. Okay, so that's how he's going to actually be able to produce stuff. So it's 10% times 10. So he can maintain this economy 
and still get 200 more units. Wow. All right. My brain's not fast enough for this. I apologize. Holy crap. Okay. Uh, we now have Bearded Axe coming in. Why not? I still feel like instant production on stables is underrated here. It'll be instant. Oh my god, what the... 65 attack. 2,000 HP? <laughs> what? What? Tusk Swords is coming in too, which should add a lot of extra attack. Well, I mean, if you have units this strong, I don't care how many stable units you have. Oh god, look at the castles from these guys. Okay, now it's plus 31 attack. Uh, now we're gonna have double crossbow come in, which would only apply to scorpions. Oh my god. They don't have enough villagers for this. Hmm, are there any HP? What if they had Byzantines? Wouldn't the castles be indestructible? Castles might actually be stupid strong if you had Byzantines. These measly weasley camel archers are gonna be nothing. But, like, this whole team on the right side is still, like, catching way up. Um, wait! Franks get extra HP on their unit. Okay, that's a 300 HP knight. So, Cavalier HP will go up. Paladin HP will go up. Oh, my God. Imagine making, like, 5 million castles. And then your Kumin teammate researches Kumin mercenaries. So, you get plus 5 free elite kip checks from each castle. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure that would actually excite you because they're still a pretty crap unit to have here, but... Oh my god, these things are so fast. I'm very impressed with both the game, but also Capture Age, that this is not broken. Um, I want to see... This is 123 gold coming in. So I guess that's 123 food that also comes in, right? I don't know, math is hard. Yeah, green's getting more castles now for more production. Everyone else is just getting techs. They probably realize they are one-fifth of the enemy score. The only thing I think that you could realistically stack would just be the, the instantly producing stables. I think instant is always strong. Elephant factory is underway, says green. Orange is laughing. Sorry for the icons all over the screen, by the way. I mean, we've got 55,000 HP here. It, it's just a couple units, man. I mean... Holy. Whoa, so Mahoots does apply. Wait, no, no, no. That's... Well, I think Mahoots applies, but also I think the Tusk Sword upgrade... Wait, no, that's not Tusk Sword. No, Khmer have a team bonus or something that makes their elephants faster, I think. So those are speedy. These things only have 320 HP. Holy. Zoomy elephants. So we have the elephant team. Elephant and eco team. Look at the trade. And then we've got the castles and to be determined team. <laughs> well, well, it all comes down to how quickly the elephant team wants to attack. But I mean, look at the gold. Clearly one team's better off. How does everyone have so much gold? They're selling food, maybe? From all the farms? From all the food? Did they get? I guess, well, they also have way more villagers. And there's gold all over the map. Yeah, that's obvious. Yes. Okay. Red's just teching into things. Yeah, the fact that you can have that much eco... <laughs> ...is wild. Okay, do 50 stables and spam. Also, green's like, I want 200 elephants before we attack. Yeah, so I think what blue said is correct. And the stables should be free, and the units should be free. So if you had, like, if the whole map was filled with stables, you could outproduce, and maybe that could make a difference. It's a bit like goth spam, I think. Assuming chivalry's research and all that, of course. But they need to, like, get the eco... No, they don't even need to get the eco for it. They just need the buildings. We do have stables from Sir Walrus. This Cavalier of 380 HP. I really want to see what Paladin looks like. Paladin's got 480. It's not too bad. Obviously, someone's going to have to do the honors of Onager cutting. 
Yeah, the scores have to be really intimidating. The Cav's useless here, though. Polish Cav, there's no bonuses you can really benefit from. When you've got resources like that, who cares if it's cheap? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I feel like they got even faster. Okay. Also, they said Spies is cheap, so I think they could see... Sir Walrus can at least see the other side. Why would Spies be cheap? Is that a... Uh, I don't know. Oh, Chinese technologies are cheaper. <laughs> Chinese technologies are cheaper, so that makes sense. Okay. 300... Oh, Camel Archers have to go to HP. All right. Also, Team Castles will work faster, too. And Oh, I want to see the Great Wall tech for Chinese. But, oh, that doesn't add HP to castles, does it? It only adds it to walls and towers. I believe it's just walls and towers. Also, scorpions have bonus damage against elephants. Oh, yeah, they have no villager population, so maybe that's why Spies is free. Because none of their population is counting for the game anymore. You've got 1,300 eco units on the field right now. But like 1,300 units also for one team. They have as much army as their opponent has eco units. But look at the production of the stables, man. Guys, I'm telling you, the paladins have a chance. The paladins have a chance. They're so fast and they produce instantly. Well, it's not actually instant, we should say. Hmm. We can wreck their buildings with speed. That's a good strategy, says Blue. And Sir Walrus says... Always have Vils making castles. That's actually the strat, is you just outrun them. So you cut through, and you just go for all their production buildings. That's really smart. Blue says, I start cutting, okay? So they're ready. They are also pop cap. That's, that's an issue. It's like, they can't have as much army. But no, they, they can be at 200 army because they don't need economy to produce, because it's free. Hmm. Like, there's a world, all the resources you bank, that doesn't become that valuable if your opponent doesn't need resources for their units. This is going to be awesome, actually. Don't show units. Let's have it as a surprise, says Red, as Gray has already researched spies, <laughs> using his own text against him. <laughs> Purple's like, I think they can infer. Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> I want to watch from Red's point of view. Zoom! <laughs> Zoom! I guess the elephants are also really fast. Oh, boy. Okay, yellow's just passing. All the... All the... Um, gather points should be set here. Where'd the camel archers go? Oh, they're being chased by elephants. Well, that's cheating. All right, there they go. Into the meat grinder with these units. Well... If the game was going to crash, this would be the moment... Army counts are actually pretty similar now. This is just the biggest traffic jam ever. I can't imagine. You've got... Like, elephants aren't known for their good hygiene in the first place. But then there's dead elephants in here, too. Like, can you imagine the smells? Disgusting, bro. Camel archers would be pretty good, because at least you're doing some damage. <laughs> I think we need to cut another path, guys. <laughs> I really think we need to cut another path, and that's going to happen now. Uh, how the camel archers do? I think they died. Raiding the trade was a good idea. Okay. Look at the paladin queue. 120 elephants is 233,000 HP. Good luck with that camel archers. Camel archers should be doing a pretty good, a pretty decent job though. Like any range unit is going to be helpful. Hey, okay, we have a cut through there. Obviously, Red's showing his experience. Uh, units ran right underneath the gate, actually. And we've got the Khmer Scorpions now firing bolts. And uh-oh, you've opened the path for the LAs. They've just got so many more units. They can effectively just block this off. Like, Hymax needs to get his paladin to the other side, I guess. Wow, this is wild. 
it just becomes a blocking game at this point. But also, the army count's still different, and then they've got so much more HP on the field because of the Bengali bonus. Like, I honestly, I think you just let them run in so you can actually engage with all your units. Because it's not helping you if, if like, units aren't dying on either side. Because the instant production should be bring some value. They're taking turns. And we've got wonders being built in the back from red. Oh, and also orange. So that's cool. I don't think wonder victory is possible, though. FYI. But yeah, like, the, the scorpions are absolutely wrecking right now. Oh, purple wants to run in this way. I, I'm really curious how this many castles are going to fare in defense. Oof. Well, we knew the plans these guys had. <laughs> I was immediately impressed with the with the elephant team. But the stable team is a pretty good plan, too. I think what hurts them is they're capped out with how much HP they can get. And they just can't have as much army. Or as much, yeah, just as much HP on the map. If this was, I wonder what would happen, though, if this is all open field. Like, eventually, you'd hope it gets to that point. Green's going to try and run through here. Okay. Castle fire and all that could be helpful. They're actually mix, missing some upgrades, but I'm not sure how valuable that is. I'd like to see maybe some Chinese scorpions. And green's just like, I'm going to focus castle. I think you lost one elephant since I last checked. Yeah, and that's that's the play, right? Just going for the buildings. It's kind of what the Paladin team had said. They just they can't use their units right now. The elephant play is the play. Holy crap. You can't stop this, man. I said we wouldn't do random Civ because I didn't want balance problems, but clearly <laughs> you can have balance problems regardless. Castles are flying down. They're melting to these things. And green, I think he lost like 15 elephants, even though he's running underneath all these castles. It's so sad to see so many units just stuck, though. It looks like there's a little bit of progress made here. I feel like maybe on Arabia, the combination that we're seeing would be better for uh, for the stable team, right? Because you'd have lots of extra HP on your scouts. You'd start with a lot more economy. I guess it's still tougher to get the Feudal Age and whatnot. But like on an open map in Castle Age, having like pretty much free stable units would allow you to pressure... But on a closed map, the post-imp composition clearly seems stronger. I mean, no offense to Orange, but Orange doesn't even matter here. Like, Orange doesn't even need to be here. Everyone else is, is doing all the, the work here, and Orange is just blocking things off. And then Gray just says, keep spamming. Will the spam be able to hold? There's still so many elephants. Oh, man. It really, what you, what you want to go for, I guess, is the stables. Holy man. Green says I'm going to their trade. Yep, okay. Let's see. With the elephants. There he goes. Great job. Killing all that precious trade. Maybe you didn't think about the fact that the units actually don't cost resources right now. <laughs> There's like four trade cards back here. <laughs> Again, their stable units are free. Oh, man, there's so many elephants on the field. Yeah, I didn't realize that, but still, I mean, it's it's actually a good spot to be because it's going to take out the stables. I actually had never seen the Big Golly Wonder till now. It's not bad. I prefer the Poles Wonder, but it's still pretty cool. Nice, a little bit of a flex job there from the Poles player to build it right next to it when it's so much bigger. All right, I'm just still watching millet army numbers. Army numbers, army numbers, army numbers. Also, what a spot for the scorpions. Gotta love that. Green's elephants are taking out the trade, which, again, I think we've established that's not helpful. Tons of progress has been made for the elephant team, as you would expect. Is there army value here? Does that work? Value. 
<laughs> zero. <laughs> zero army value because they cost zero resources. I was curious if Capture Age picked up on that. Like, I wasn't sure if the value would be based on what they paid for it in game or what the unit typically has value. Yeah, let's check the HP. This might break Capture Age. Ready? <laughs> the whole map's HP, people. 380k HP versus 170k HP. I gotta click off of that because I am scared this will drop, and this is cool. I think without Persians, though, if Persians weren't in the game and it was just other elephants, I think that the stable choice would be better. Not sure if that's actually correct, but it's really just the HP on the elephants, the Persian elephants, that's the problem. 320 HP on the other elephants is not a, an issue at all because the paladins and the camels have them. So, Persians are clearly a top tier pick here. I think regardless of who you stack it with. I mean, as I say this, like, I guess I'm not seeing a lot of those elephants here. Running forward. I, I, okay, they're actually, you think they die, but they just don't freaking die, man. <laughs> Blue says he has 750 paladins in queue. Need more stables, man. Need more stables. They're taking out your stables. You got 300. The resources are obviously looking really good for the other teams. They can still afford to make all this stuff. Oh my goodness, man. Yeah, it's green is the problem. The other players have obviously played well. He's, like this group of 40 elephants has 600 kills. Yeah, I was curious how Chinese Scorpions would do. They don't have a range bonus or a firing speed bonus, and you're still against, like, a lot of HP, but against this many elephants, I think that that would have been worth the shot. The problem I see, Roach, is you have to pay resources for it, which feels really bad, and it also produces really slow. So it's it, arguably that it's more valuable to just make free instant paladins than it is to mix in scorpions. Crazy. I think they're going to tap out here. Yellow's almost defeated. Oh, yellow did tap out. Yellow really has nothing at this point. Blue could still hold on for a little bit longer, but wow. Dang, man. Elephants and scorpions seem to be the way. Green says, I feel bad for suggesting this. Well, it was a good suggestion. I truly thought that having Chinese at the start would be OP. But I completely forgot about Bengalis and how they would be able to catch up with Bills. Like, I think Red did a great job for his team using the Bengali bonuses. Clearly seems like someone who plays this a lot. Plus, Red is also higher rated. He's like 600 ELO higher than every other player in this game. Bengalis and Persians is an amazing stack. And then, of course, Khmer, too, right? And then you want Poles in there, not for the units, but you just want it for the food. Because if you don't have the Polish food early, you, you never get to this as quickly. So the Polish food allowed them to catch up with Vils and get the Feudalage and Castleage and all that really fast. So it was really well thought out. Hmm. It should be random sieves, I think. It's the way to go to see a surprise. Sieves, then it could be very easy to make something OP. Well, I wanted to see something OP here. Uh, that was the point. I wanted to see what my viewers would strategize. And I, I think we could clearly see the plan, right? Let's see why it took so long for them to get started. They had ideas, and they executed on those ideas. And yet again, I will maintain, if Persians were in here, I think the Paladins are insane. He's got 300 Paladins in queue. Like, the Paladins don't stop. Even with Yellow out of the game, that production's really tough to deal with. And it's free, too, guys. So Gray's still got production. You just need stables. They don't spend any resources for this. They're actually holding. Because Green doesn't have... You know, he had to wait for more Elephants. Honestly, I think if Yellow was still in the game, they could actually have pushed it back. Blue's going to try and make a run for it. If Yellow had his stables, right? Gray struggling to have Vils right now, so he can't really build those stables. But 
There goes blue into the trade. Zoom. Yeah, the, the scorpions will actually get cleared here. Really sick job here from Hymax. Blue is unfortunately dying. So some support is needed there. But I guess all the trade's gonna go down now, and there is a lot of trade out there. Red obviously still has a lot of gold, though. If you're ever gonna come back after losing a player, it would probably be... I was wrong about the scorpions. Um... Oh, there's the free Kipchaks! <laughs> Let's go! A <laughs> hundred Kipchaks! <laughs> uh... <laughs> Yeah, if you're ever going to come back after you lost the player, it would probably be in this type of a game mode, but it still looks like it's going to be tough for them. Hipchex have 620 HP, though. That's pretty wild. Blue wasn't able to clear up much of the trade. Seems to be getting dealt with. Resources still looking pretty good. Not looking great for green, but green still has 100 elephants. But if they could defend from these 100 elephants, maybe? Because the gold count's very low. Pretty low for purple as well, to be honest. Red's doing great because red has 400 eco. I think they're going to call it now because gray can't really contribute. But I really did, even though it looks like it's a wash, I really like the approach with the stable. I think it could have worked. Persians just makes it seem impossible I'm also curious what happens if you were to have all the scorpion bonuses with elephants involved like Khmer Ethiopians Celts alone with scorpions from range elephants are chonky and they, they while they're fast I don't know if they could really compete where do these Kipcheks go Kipcheks are actually sick Okay, going in for castles over here. Blue says when they kill Monastery, GG. Well, it's gone. So it looks like they're going to tap out and call the GG. That was fun. Oh, it, it, poor Deadeye says my laptop couldn't handle it. I, I don't, no worries, don't stress. I was surprised that the game let me spectate this many units. Wow. Emphasis, GG, it's my B-Day present. Thanks, all. Great game. It must feel a little bad for on your birthday. You didn't get to play with all the cool toys. But poles were very much needed here for your team to do that well. Look at the units most created. Okay, back to my point. And that also shows you how insane the paladins are. But, guys, 2,600 paladins. What's the KD look like? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so... In conclusion, <laughs> the Bengalis, great. I really liked what we saw from Red. I thought it was creative. It also helped out the team. Obviously, having poles on the team was also great. Khmer, fantastic. Lovely. But nothing compares to what Green did in this game. 4,600 kills and 186 units lost. So I maintain, I actually think the thinking from the team that lost wasn't bad this game. It's just you can't stop the Persians, man. And not only can you not stop the Persians, but you can stop the Persians when it is able to get that eco. And that's the most important thing, which is why Bengali's polls and, and all those things were really strong. Um, funny stuff, man. So, so here's the deal. Like, we've explored this in a lot of different ways now. We'll probably still continue to do free-for-alls because I like the idea of free-for-alls. It's more community game style. But I'm really inspired. I don't know about you, what you guys think. To even, like bring this into maybe doing a show match, getting some high-level teams stacking this stuff, or like a week-long tourney. Like, it's on my list now to do some type of, something that's semi-competitive with these settings to see what people could think of. I think it'd be really cool, too, because you could have people who are, like, mid-elo, think of a really good stack, practice a lot, and, like, beat big names or something. So I'm going to think on that, but I, I hope people enjoy this. And maybe the next time we do it, we just do random sieve. But... I liked there being a theme to this game, and that's why I ended up going for it. Obviously, resources collected was crazy. To be expected from red. It doesn't necessarily amount, though, to a crazy KD. That's good. 
But that's not why they won. This is why they won. The elephants were too strong. Um, I don't know if there's any other crazy stats that would pop up here. Trade units is interesting. Castles. 56 castles, 38 castles, 42 castles. Could have honestly had more castles. If there was a bigger map, they could have castled the whole time. The problem was these guys fell too far behind in economy. Falling too far behind in economy put them under a lot of pressure in this game. Which is funny because, like, they fall behind in economy, but at the end of the day, everything's kind of free. It, it's just funny how this game swings. They start with way more villagers. Oh, my God, that's incredible. Other team has, like, 100 more villagers. Oh, my God, that's incredible. Other team's behind an eco. But wait, everything's free now. I mean, this, this, this mode is crazy. So, hope people enjoyed that one. Obviously, leave your thoughts in the comments if you're watching on YouTube. And I'll be sure to take a look. Because, like I said, I really like these settings. I have a good time. Uh, I'm actually kind of tempted to play it, too. <laughs> uh, I've just been doing all this casting, but now I want to give it a shot myself at some point. GG.